And right now, the Indianapolis Ballet Company is bringing back professional ballet to our city for the first time in more than a decade. The company performs a Midsummer's Night Dream next week. Joe Melilla went to the studio to check it out, kind of uh, <laughs> gave it his own twist, if you will, joins us live downtown. Joe, good morning. I had no idea you were such the ballerina. Listen, I, I, I wanted to give it a shot as usual. I like to try things I've never done before, and Indianapolis gives me that opportunity to do that. I'm at the Indianapolis School of Ballet, which is now home to Indy's newest ballet company. Uh, these are paid dancers. After a major funding campaign, they have now opened up for the first half of their season, and they got a full season coming on up in the fall. Here's a little bit more about the company. We start every day with class um, to get the dancers warmed up and ready for the day. Pas de cheval to plie, and up, fifth, and first. Professional ballet is back in Indy with roots at the school located downtown, the Indianapolis School of Ballet. Ballet International, which was previously called Indianapolis Ballet Theater, closed back in 2005 after 32 years because of financial difficulties. Indianapolis has been without a professional ballet ever since. Um, I have wanted to be a professional ballet dancer since I was in elementary school. Kristen Young Toner is from Noblesville, went to Heritage Christian Academy. She also was one of the first graduates from the Indianapolis School of Ballet. She's come back home after dancing elsewhere. It's awesome to be home, but we also have a reputation to live up to because there used to be a professional company in Indianapolis and they folded. My love and commitment to the art form is so genuine and so deep. Victoria Lyris is what some call the genius behind it all. More important than selling out their shows, which they did for all three in February, Victoria says the most important thing is getting indie back on the map. We have all of these cultural organizations that are an absolute must, a must for the growth and, and, and health of any metropolitan community and business community. It's a, it's a start of something new and exciting. When you walk across the street, you're taking a risk. <laughs> when you start a ballet, you're taking a risk. Sure. And then every day, you do a little bit more and a little bit more, and you find yourself in it. You know, the company is uh, in their middle of their first half season. They started kind of in this winter. It'll go into their full season starting this fall. What that means is more dancers and more performances. If you want to learn more, go to, in, go to IndieBallet.com. I put more information on Wish TV, and stay tuned. You will get a chance to see me in spandex, and uh, yeah, I know, uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks, Marcus. My uh, so, photographer clearly you, doesn't agree. You, is that incentive to tune in or tune out? I was gonna say, out? we want viewers to stay tuned there, Joe. Just, yeah, just one more hour, that's it. Okay. Just next hour. A threat or a promise?